Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, D'Anthony. Yeah. Yet another fun, exciting episode of Drinking Bros. We've been on a roll lately. We had a guy on today that was a fan of ours, and we're also a fan of his. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It, it is fun, man. We've, fun we've had a, a murderer's row full of guests lately. Uh, today is no different. We've got uh, Mr. A.J. Buckley. Mm-hmm. Um, you might know him from CSI New York. He was on that show for, Jesus, 150 episodes. Now he stars on uh, SEAL He was Team. on Justified for a while, too. Yeah, yeah. Justified for, yeah. for <clears throat> shit, man, maybe 12, 15 episodes. And, and currently, he's on SEAL Team on CBS, which is mid-60s. Where uh, You're looking at, what, three, four seasons now with that? They're in the, they're, they just finished uh, shooting season three, although they got cut short by one episode. But, yeah, yeah. Six, I, think, I think there were 63 episodes. Yeah. Uh, our good buddy Tyler Gray is mm-hmm. on that show. And yeah. we heard a rumor that Burt Koontz might be on that show. Eventually. We, we got to yeah. get Burt from TV back on TV. Yep. Uh, that's got to be a thing that happens mm-hmm. in 2020, I feel like. Uh, we got to get rid of this, this COVID shit first. Yep. And uh, hopefully get back to normal. Meanwhile, while, it, while it's going on and everybody's quarantined, we are coming at you every single day, Monday through Saturday. Uh, subscribe to Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube. And then audio show is up uh, every single night at 8 p.m. EST as well. And again, Monday through Saturday, we are here for you, for the people. And we've enjoyed it, man. Um, you know, I know people are going through hard times right now, but uh, the good thing is a lot of celebrities have been off. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's helped us quite a bit, actually. So they get to be on the show, yeah. and, and we get to give you guys amazing uh, content every day. Yeah, so if we're, you didn't, we're stoked about that. The the Archie Bradley episode yesterday was really good. So he's, good. The, he's the closer for the Arizona uh, Diamondbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully baseball will start again soon. Yeah, he's been getting tagged all day today, by the way. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. Archie, at Archie Bradley uh, seven, 7 yeah. on Instagram. Just put hashtag drinking bros on there. They're going to give you some uh, free Arizona Diamondbacks gear yep. if you do so. Uh, before we get to AJ Buckley, as always, we got some sponsors who put this whole shit wagon on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off everything in the entire store. Pillows, mattresses, sheets, adjustable bases, you name it. Everything is 25% off. They've extended this. Um, initially, they were just going to start it for the, the first couple of weeks. The quarantine, um, as it's gone on and gotten to be a little more serious uh, and everybody's stuck inside, they've extended this sale for a long time and it's still going on. Uh, so go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and uh, maybe you can use some of that stimulus money. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, man, uh, Ross, I want to blow a whole paycheck on this. They've got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program, no interest. So if you're looking for a new mattress, uh, something to stay comfy, cozy in during this whole shit, um, uh, it'll knock it down to about 25 bucks a month mm-hmm. uh, for you know 36 month no interest, which is great. Um, ghostbed.com is always doing cool shit like that. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. And get on damn deals, son. Next up, we got DukeCannon.com. Whew. Damn thick. thick. I honestly wish they would change it to two Cs. So do I. Package. So do I. Just, like, make it thick and, like, I don't, I don't, is this racist? I don't want to get thick too racist. boys. No. I was thinking of, like, an Aunt Jemima style, but, like. Some uh-huh. some ethnicity that's known for big asses. Yeah. And just make that part of the marketing. Okay. Maybe Thick. maybe go Puerto Rican on that. You know? Dukes. I mean, this is these are veterans. They Duke, are? Duke Cannon is owned by veterans. Best right? So I know, I know they have uh, that, that same sense of humor that we do. Of course. So I feel like putting thick and just having like a picture of a Latin girl on there or something would be really fucking funny. Thick. Just soaping or, up with a loofah. Yeah. Or at least like maybe they should get a Latin girl influencer. And it, it just I says, agree. It's like her in the shower. She's lathering up her giant mm-hmm. butt cheeks with fucking this stuff. And it is dropped. Like two of them dropped next to her. The bounce. Boom. And it just says thick with two C's. Yeah. Duke Cannon. Enjoy the thickness. I just did your job for you, Duke. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Truthfully, this is one of those where you guys message us all the time about sponsors you want us to have on the show (laughs) so you guys can get a promo code. This was pitched to us religiously over and over and over again. So we reached out to Duke Cannon and we said, hey, man, uh, 80% of our audience is military and first responder. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you guys are all veterans who run this company. I think this would be a great fit and we can give a promo code to the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, we were able to make this happen for you guys. Finest body wash in the biz. This was, you stole it immediately once it came in. Go to dukecannon.com, uh, promo code Drinking Bros. Mm -hmm. Get you get you fifteen percent off. <laughs> yeah, uh, fifteen percent off, and uh, each one of these things, man, it's it's like a dime size. Uh, they last forever, which is great. You're talking about the high viscosity. Yeah, like man. yeah, you don't have to. I mean, it, this the bottle. I don't know how how many. It's huge. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much. What Not, the, it's it's nine bucks a bottle, but they're fucking huge, man. That's all, that's really yeah. all you need. And then you know you can get a four pack for thirty bucks because um, all of the 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 scents are amazing. It's almost mm. like you don't need cologne with this <laughs> shit. Um, all of you guys use it already. We're just, look, we're just giving you a fucking promo code at this point. Uh, go to DukeCannon.com, promo code Drinking Bros gets you 15% off and uh, free shipping uh, with that at DukeCannon.com. Last but not least, we've got Manscaped.com. They sent me a t-shirt and it just says Manscaped and under, the, mm -hmm. under that it says your balls will thank you. I've got a shirt somewhere, is it? Yeah. Is it on set? Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure either. I think it's pretty funny. So do I. Look, their products are amazing, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, this it's, is like it's the best fucking groomer, like that I've ever used in the business. Yeah, it's, like for real, it's not even close. Like nothing I've ever used. I've never been able to consistently groom myself and not nick myself and and whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that that's that's what happens, man. Yeah. You're, you're shaving down below. You got to shave them balls once or twice a year. As bean well. bag, bean bag. You got to shave the bean bag up yep. uh, a little bit, and then take a. Take a number two uh, to your pubes as well. Like nobody wants to be searching. Now you're not talking about jungle. shitting on your own pubic hair. No, 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 no. Uh, you don't. You don't want it to be Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle down there. You want to. Yeah. You want to shave up. You yeah. want to shave up. Uh, Manscaped.com uh, was was finally like, hey man, you guys talk about shaving your dick and and balls mm -hmm. and pubic hair so much. Uh, we actually do that for a living. Mm -hmm. um, well, we don't. We don't I'm kids. sorry. We don't shave our dick and dicks and balls for a living. Yeah, we do. No, I, I do. Not how do you? You're not getting. I always paid. want it camera ready. I want my entire package camera ready. I still blast out a lot of dick pics to buddies. Mm. You know, um, where I'm like, oh hey man, like, did you hear about Kim Jong Un almost dying last night? I'm like, I know. Here's a picture of him in the hospital with a respirator, and then I'll just snap off a picture of my dick and balls, like yeah. laying, in, laying in my hands. Um, but I'll put I put like little dashes on the head. You know, as like eyes, like little slanty eyes that are closed. Um, I like to dress up my di my dick a little bit. I've know? done that. I I did uh, a whole series where I dress my dick up like all the members of Kiss. Ah, very nice. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would just send them out. Obviously, not to women. That's weird. Nah, that's weird. You gotta, that's you that's send that's that's, that's kind of like sexual harassment. But to do it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Get get a, get a nice Paul Stanley on that dick. Mm -hmm. um, but go to manscaped dot com and uh, get the shed travel bag, dude. That's the best. That that comes with the. Uh, uh, the fucking zing, 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 zing. Uh, the razors, the trimmers, everything. Uh, you get twenty percent off uh, with the promo code Drinking Bros and free shipping at Manscaped.com. Best in the biz, dude. I'm I'm looking at their their ads now. Um, it's they're calling it the Joe Burrow of trimmers. <laughs> That's a little premature. Let him throw one pass in the NFL first. Manscaped, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And by the way, the razor is called the lawnmower 3.0. Mm -hmm. It's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really they're, funny. If you watch, really funny, man. If you watch their um, their ads, because they pop up before our YouTube videos quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. If you watch their ads, they're really they're really funny guys. You can tell the people that run that company are people that you would probably want to hang out with. Yeah, which is what, who that's who we like to work with. Because honestly, we go a couple times a year. We go to New York once, and we, and we do some other stuff with, with people that are sponsors. The actual sponsors. Like yeah, we, don't, we, don't, we don't just get phone calls from these people like, oh, yeah, we'll pimp your shit. Now we go hang out with these people yes. and decide if we want to work with them and shit mm -hmm. like that. I'm, we haven't had a chance with these guys yet, but I'm guessing that's going to be, provided COVID allows it, in October when we go for upfronts, it's yeah. going to be a, a fucking wild-ass party. Oh, so man, I'm amped. To that I'm one. amped. I love these guys' products, and uh, it's, it's <clears> something <throat> that, truthfully, every dude should have. Otherwise, you're trying to use your wife's shit or fucking nicking your balls with your own razors. Like, don't do it. Go to manscaped.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off and free shipping. Uh, speaking of Joe Burrow, looking forward to the NFL draft. Uh, D'Anthony and I will be coming mm -hmm. at you live uh, Thursday night uh, around 7 o'clock. Live, live and intoxicated. Live and very intoxicated yeah. and hopefully on some other things. 
Uh, but we'll see. Mm. Um, but uh, that, that's going to be sponsored by MyBookie.com. Um, there is a shit ton, shit ton of bets to be made on the draft. And uh, they sent us the whole spreadsheet last night. Fuck yes, dude. It's back. I'm excited to gamble on sports again. Yeah. And they've got they've got some parlays in there of like, uh, by the way, promo code is drinking bros to double your deposit. And you can bet with us or against us on there. They've got how many Ohio State players will be drafted in the first round? Uh, Alabama players. When will Jeff Clemson Akuda players? be drafted? Yeah, dude. Total Alabama players drafted. Oh. I mean, there's so much. I'm fucking amped about this. Um, yeah. So we're going to go on live an hour beforehand, kind of give you our picks and our bets, and then watch the draft with you all night and get rocked. Uh, we'll get Jamie some pizza. Uh, he'll care about sports for the evening, and uh, we're going to have a fucking blast of a time. So we're looking forward to that. Shout out to mybookie.com. Uh, they will be our, our our show sponsor the entire night. Promo code <laughs> Drinking Bros there. So get in and uh, get in now. Double your deposits and uh, or you can just play their casino games if you're fucking bored. Uh, blackjack. They're doing blackjack tournaments every weekend for 10, mm-hmm. 10 grand a pop. Um, there's and that's a, that's the promo code Drinking Bros Casino. Yeah, and that will double in a half your deposit. Uh, there's one hundred fifty percent. There's a shitload of cool fucking prop bets on here. Tons. Like you can pick when Chase Young will be drafted. Yep. Jail. Over under too, so yeah, you know what pick under, it yeah. is, and uh, and I'm amped about it. I just got that that betting sheet last night, so um, we will come on air before that. Maybe we'll do a fucking live show before that goes on, so we can get these bets out there, so you guys have a chance to bet with us because uh, we've we've been on fire uh, the last two seasons in a row with football and the draft is certainly uh, one of my strong suits as well. So I'm amped about that. Uh, D'Anthony, let's yep. hop into the show with Mr. AJ Buckley, shall we? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got AJ Buckley on the show today. Yeah. Welcome to Drinking Bros, AJ. How are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm actually really excited to be on uh, on on this podcast because I listen to it all the time. And uh, when you uh, asked me to come on, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> so uh, appreciate, I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate being here. Sorry, I had to cancel the other week, but uh, I don't know if you've heard any of screaming. Well, we've put my my sons down to bed and quarantine with uh twin boys who are two and uh and homeschooling and we and we actually moved on march 15th oh shit oh, uh, fuck so man. right and then, so it's just been like boxes and shit and then like you can, and we moved um to a smaller place uh and because our, our plan was to we were supposed to actually be at Nashville right now because we we're, we're our plan is to end up in Nashville, so mm-hmm. we're supposed to be there right now. So we're like, we'll downsize here, have a smaller footprint mm-hmm. here, footprint here, and then and have my family based out of there. And uh, this all happened, so we went from having a huge backyard to no backyard, and it's just been a shit show. It's been fucking crazy. It's a so. mess. <laughs> How and I, 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 I yeah. feel like that's all celebrities these days. Like everybody's. Keeping a house in LA, but getting the fuck out yeah. of there and going to either Austin or Nashville. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah for, for you know for a bunch of different reasons. You know, one Nashville is just awesome, and and I've always wanted land, and mm-hmm. especially even more so now with everything going on in the world. And my wife being from Kentucky, and uh, the, the the tax there is you know the, how we just get just fucked so Rails. hard here with taxes. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's like and you really it's like you. You know, you work like I just—it doesn't make sense. You can't like the end of the year. You're like, how is this pot? Like, where did it? Where did all the money go? And for what? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so it's uh, it's been a crazy couple of months, but or a couple. How I don't even know what fucking day it is right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's it has been. But honestly, you know, the silver lining. I have not got to spend this much time with my kids mm-hmm. in well, probably since. They've all been born just because my work schedule has been so nuts. So I'm. It's been actually really cool, and I have a. I've always loved my wife, but I, I have an incredibly newfound love for her patience. <laughs> it's exhausting. You, crazy. you guys, you guys oh, have yeah. one of the more brutal uh, shoot schedules that I've ever seen. Yeah, like yeah, it's, it's fucking crazy. You guys shoot for ten, like legit ten months out of the year. Ten months straight. We yeah, can, ten months straight. Weekends yeah. are off, but you guys are shooting. I mean, it depends on what scenes you're in and shit, but it could be 12, 14, 16 hour days sometimes. And I like Tyler, it, it, Tyler will text pretty, me and it's yeah. like fucking two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, we're still out here. I'm like, holy shit, dude. Oh, yeah. 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 It's 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 a no joke. Uh, 
for like compared to any other network show or mm. just show in general that I've done, you know, you have your, your day because you you got your studio days and it's just not as much physicality, you know. But we're out um, out in the uh, exterior shots from five uh, out of the five to six out of the eight shooting days, um, and and you've been by set, you've seen yeah. how it is. It's just like <clears throat> it's. I mean, we're 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 running and gunning, you know, pretty much all that time. And, and it's like, you know, at a certain point, like, look, I'm an actor at the end of the day. I have, <laughs> this is, this is a, a, a new experience and just the information, all the techniques and everything that we've, we've had to, had to learn. But at the end of the day, I'm like, you know, I'm 42 and I'm, you know, we're on top of the schedule, we're training and doing that. So there's just, it's your body for, and then you come home and you're, your got your kids and it's just it's it's nothing that i've ever experienced but i'll tell you what i would not trade it for anything ever because it's by far one of the <laughs> best jobs and the most fun job it's, it's really you know all the guys we become incredibly close and that's not, not just the cast but um as you guys know a lot of uh all of our stunt guy are former uh mm -hmm. Our, st our stunt doubles and other stunt guys are former special operations and uh just to get to hang out with them you know and and hear the stories and and the shit that we all get into and the yeah. pranks and you know it's not it is not it's like you know it's just hanging out with your buddies all day so well, it Ma definitely, it max definitely, is kind of a dick right he likes to troll everybody well he, i'm like his i'm like his target i <laughs> i i tend I, I can fall asleep really quickly like i could be i could get t tested for narcolepsy and it, it, there's probably uh, i'm probably a, a strong candidate for uh for or a positive on that, uh, um, because I can be talking to you in mid sentence. You look over and I'll be snoring. It'll just happen. <laughs> <laughs> so Max, Max, being the good friend he is, takes well advantage of that, and he will post everything that he does to me on Instagram. So I'll literally be sitting there. I'll be saying, oh, or as soon as I feel warm and cozy, and I, I'm laying back in my pack, and we're up in the mountains or somewhere, I'm like, oh, this is nice. And I'll mm -hmm. kind of try and find a, I'll try and veer off away from them. I'm like, okay, there's no way they'll see me down here. And I'm like, I'm out. I, like, I'll, I turn off, I'm like a light switch. So I'm out, I'm having the best dream. And next thing you know, I've got, like he came into my, I was, he knew I was going to be sleeping. He found this dead baby rattlesnake and he fucking <laughs> comes into my trailer and he fucking chucks it at me. And I'm like in that half dream space. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and uh, yeah, but he's, uh, he's, he's the master, uh, he's the master prank. He gets me every time, dude. I'm like, I'm like, you'll never get me again. And then, Fucking the next day or two hours later, he got me. So. All of a sudden, there's, va there's Vaseline on the, on the toilet seat in the yeah. trailer and, and a yeah. dildo sticking up. And it's like, yeah. Whoa, you got, you got, you me, again. got me. I've, ac I've accidentally had gay sex now. Um. Yeah. I hate when you do that, Max. I hate it. It's not gay sex. It's just a prank. It's just it's a so prank. True. It's just boys being boys. Exactly. Joshing around. It's boys being boys. You guys, it is. That's showbiz, baby. That's showbiz. I don't know who. Yeah. Did the uh, who did the uh, casting for the show? But I've there's you couldn't have put a better group of people together to do what you guys are doing, like you and Max and Neil and David that. and all the guys and Tyler, obviously. Yeah, like you, you yeah. just couldn't have put a better group of dudes together. And he's right. Like when I'm on set or when I was on set, anybody that was a stunt guy or an extra, mm -hmm. that their team, their fucking team guys are all seals sure. for the most part. Yeah, or or somebody that yeah. was affiliated with the military in some way. It's I was really surprised because a bunch of people. That were on set recognized uh burton myself some of them knew him from before but some of them recognized me from the show i'm like why would you mm -hmm. watch the show like oh we're in the military I'm like yeah, oh, yeah, shit. yeah like is everybody yeah. here in the goddamn yeah. military what's happening well it's refreshing to hear that, yeah. a, that a show called seal team uh in hollywood has mm -hmm. actual military veterans working on set because look let's face it i'm sure you've heard the critiques on other military yeah. tv yeah. shows and movies yeah. of how they always get it wrong yeah. And it sucks. Yeah. And your show yeah. has never, ever had that knock on it. No. As a matter of fact, everybody yeah. behind the scenes military-wise is like, oh, man, th th that's the only show that got it right. Like, these are the only fucking yeah. guys that got it right. And, and I got to give the credit to uh, Mark Owen and to uh, uh, Chris Chulak because when, the, when they were sold it, they had, you know, Mark had said, you know, like, look, if we're, I'm going to go down this road. We've got to surround the guys with i don't want stunt just stunt guys coming in i need my guys and that's sort of the president of the set and we're actually the first show in television history to hire i think it's over like 60 percent of our crew 
our veterans. Holy shit. So that's great. A, and, and that's never happened in television history before. And actually one of the coolest things is the tech advisors and Tyler, when he first started out, he was a tech advisor. Um, but you know, there's, there's, there's guys in like Mark Simos is one of our head writers. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 um, you know, there's like 10, there's probably like three, there's three, three team guys that are in the room, uh, writing, uh, like Kenny, do you guys know Kenny? Yeah. Um, and a bunch of other guys. And then, uh, we've got a ton of guys behind the camera. We got guys that are in front of this guy, like Scotty Fox now has kind of become like, he's one of the funniest guys ever. He just is so quiet. He, him and I actually go in battle of, of who can fall asleep the quickest. He can fall asleep <laughs> standing up Jesus and in, scene, in, in, in scenes, in scenes, no joke. He will be standing up with his, his, uh, his glasses on. And it looked like he's standing there, and all of a sudden you'll hear him snoring, and he'd be like, "Scott, he's like, oh, go. but he'll be standing up sleeping." I'm like, "That's a fucking talent." <laughs> That's a shark. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> it, it is a shark. It's a but, shark, uh, is what it but, is. Yeah, but what's really been cool with the with the with the crew and with everybody, they they really set the tone. And and you know, when you have d directors coming in, like each week we have a new director, and you know, especially in the first season. You know, directors come in. They're like, "Hey, well, you know, but every director wants to make it their own, which is what you want." But there's a real protocol that we have on our set, which does not exist on any other show. When it when a guest director or director shows up, it's usually his fucking show. But if they're shooting something that isn't the way we would move, or isn't realistic, or something that we do, Tyler or one of the other tech advisors has the ability to step in and call cut and say, "Sir, I'm sorry, this we wouldn't." We wouldn't shoot at this guy. Mm -hmm. And one guy, the one guy, I remember this one guy, I won't say his name, but he was like, he goes, yeah, you know, but I want to make it look fucking cool. He goes, <laughs> okay, cool. Then do it the way, do it the way we do it. And it's going to look fucking cool. And he was like, and he did, he kind of didn't get that, that Tyler could stop this. And then when the writers came up, like, I oh, just, you gotta, you gotta listen to him. And they were, they, he was like, okay. And he kind of had his butt hurt a bit. He was like, all right, fine. But then he, <laughs> once he understood, yeah. but it was like, that's the sort of reverence and respect that we, we we've set the, the the tone on the show that 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 just has to be that um, the way it has to be and, and that really goes to 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 Chulak and our, our showrunner mm -hmm. Spencer Hundlet and and all the other guys and 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 um, yeah it's just it's a, it's been a really cool cool um, uh, you know process of learning and, and show to be a part of uh, you know it's it's been awesome yeah because that's that's a lot of things that people don't realize about tv shows um you know that go mm -hmm. 22 episodes a season I, I that's probably what you guys are on right somewhere in the 22 yeah, exactly. range 22 23 um, yeah. and they well, usually bring in a guest director for every episode yeah. so it could be a new yeah. person every other week and yeah, yeah. unless they are with the style of the show because everybody tries to come in guest director wise and be like oh man my episode yeah. is going to be the best and it's going to be shot like Tarantino. And you're like, well, there's yeah, still a yeah. format that we have to abide by. So I know who yeah. you're, you're talking about. And, you know, yeah. from the directing standpoint, that they are not used to that. They don't want to hear yeah. an outside voice tell them no, because typically no one tells them no on a set. Um, yeah. In this case, it happens to be Tyler Gray. Nobody's going to fuck with Tyler. No, I mean, I think it's uh, – <laughs> look, he – the. Uh, the, the funny thing, well, never mind. But anyways, uh, I, just, I was about to say some shit that I can't, that I'm not allowed to say in public. Uh, well, he, like, I don't think anybody would, uh, like, when, I can understand a director getting butthurt about that because mm -hmm. it's just atypical, right? I mean, well, you, and they think, you wanna, look, you it's, come it's Hollywood. Thing, yeah. We're playing pretend anyways. What does yeah. it matter? And it's yeah. like, well, yeah. there are a bunch of military veterans watching the show that want to see it done correctly. Look, there's, there's 40, yeah. about 40,000 people leave the military every month 40,000 mm. per month get out which means 40,000 mm. per month are getting in as well that's 80,000 people that are going one way or the other per month just, not yeah. in, not including yeah. people who are active duty which is about 2 million mm -hmm. right so it's a massive mm. audience yeah there's about 23 million veterans in the United States give or take yeah so yeah. we're talking about 30 million or so people yeah. that are directly connected not mm. including the family members of these people and the way you guys yeah. have committed to that paradigm and, and the way you move the way you talk to each other and all that stuff particularly the way the combat scenes go look sometimes you got to church shit up and have an, yeah, ex have an TV, explosion yeah. behind you when you're walking away from it which is yeah. not real because you get fucking traumatic brain injury from that shit uh, yeah but uh you know it's, Dude, it's speak, speaking of which not to cut you off there no, but i remember the first first day we were uh learning to do breaches and we were doing it on a studio yep and th and they were like keep your keep your mouth open yeah. Uh, Shut your eyes and like, keep your mouth I was open. Like, yeah. 
Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. And I have ADD and I totally forgot. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> and they're like, you keep your mouth, mouth open. I'm like, no, but I'm like, I promise I will never let that happen again. Yeah. Every time we have a breach, every time we're about to do a breach for like five minutes, I'm just walking around. I guess, ah, <laughs> so I don't forget. It's like, yeah. It's like, but we've had, you know, even just stuff like I, when I signed up to think I had, I didn't really shot a fucking gun before. I hadn't mm. done anything, you know? So I'm an Irish Canadian. It was like, I'm playing this Texan. And, um, you know, and, and all my, the ones I was t- shooting, it was like the 249 and the Mach 48. Mm-hmm. So it was all the big knuckle dragon, um, guns. And, uh, I, I mean, it was like, dude, I, when I fought, shot the Mach 48 for the first time, mm-hmm. I saw a flame come out of it. I'm not going to lie. I got fully erect. It was just, <laughs> I was like, this, it, it was, it was super, super, super awkward. And we were shooting in a church. So I was like, this is weird. Uh, and but, we're, I'm like, <laughs> but I just, I was like, I'm like, I looked at Tyler. I'm like, I fucking get it, man. I'm this. Yeah. I felt like Rambo. It was just like, yeah, it was, awesome. it was a cool, but, but that, that learning curve. But one of, one of the things that um, is, has been really cool and I, it, it goes out to CBS as well. You know, there's some issues that are, have been very touchy, you know, dealing with the VA and TBI and PTSD. And we did an episode, an arc of an episode, last season with his character Swanee that Max yeah. was his storyline and just mm-hmm. of his story, how, you know, getting the, the, the TBI wasn't reported during the injury. So he couldn't apply for certain things. And, you know, he was having all these thoughts and, you know, um, uh, you know, he ended up committing suicide and it was, a and it, it was loosely based on one of Simos's friends and Simos had the dad of the son that committed suicide come down mm. and sit in the writer's room for the episodes and just talk Oof. and like he was a big he was a big part of that episode and of this character and Simos is you know I feel like it was really therapeutic for Simos just writing this story and but that that story wherever I go still out if I'm in the airport if I'm somewhere someone will come up to me like hey man thanks for telling that story about how hard it is for us with the VA and 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 what it's been like and or, or a father who's lost somebody a son or um, a daughter, whatever, and just said, Hey, that was, that really was, um, an outstanding thing. I thought Max absolutely crushed that. And I thought the, the guy that played Swan, it was a really true, honest thing. So it's not just about the movement and stuff. It's been really cool that we've got to tell these other stories and it's not so much about the battle, but just the, the battle of, of these characters when they mm-hmm. come at home. And, and I, it is, I knew there was, you know, when the soldier stuff came back, I knew I was struck, but I had, I, I truly had no clue. You know, to be totally honest, I had absolutely how 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 hard it is, how how uh, you know what what um, you guys have gone through, and but what blew me away more than it was just the lack of fucking help. That there was nothing. That there's like you know some of your top guys coming home, and there's nothing. Yeah. And I just could I couldn't believe that. So to put put to to put that sort of the forefront and stuff, it, it was it, you know made me really proud to be a part of this show. Yeah, man. Uh, has there been any pushback on any storylines that the network said, hey, that's a little too intense. Don't do this. Um, I think there always is in, in a, a way. But I think then when one of the team guys go in the room and, and talk to them, you're like this is, you know, and I and I and I, and I think it was more so at the beginning mm-hmm. of it because, you know, they, you know, they, they make NCIS and stuff and not 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 shitting on any of those shows, but they're, it's a lot different than what this is and i think it's a lot campier yeah exactly so the the and, and i think chulak you know has really sort of said said to them you know i want to be as authentic as possible and he's like he always goes back to the, the network and studio like look this is a promise i made we got we got to tell it this way we cannot mm-hmm. fuck around when it because otherwise if we slip here then it's going to slowly start to unravel because we give give here so i'm sure it's a constant battle, but cbs honestly they've been they've been awesome there's no other show like it on their network that te- that is as honest as this so it was a big gamble going with the network because you you think a show like this would be a cable um type yeah. show but you know it's uh it's it's been it's been good yeah it's cr- look it's crushing in the ratings um you've been one of those actors who has been working for what feels like 20 years at this point yeah, uh, kind of yeah kind of knocking around always doing great guesswork on other people's shows now you're a regular yeah. on this is is that a dream come yeah. true at this point to be with a cast like this I, oh 100 uh my favorite characters 
always and still is is John McClane. I just think he's the greatest character. Yeah, ever Die written. Hard. It's, it's, it's the best Christmas movie of all time. Goddamn uh, right it is. Goddamn right it is. <laughs> just every every <clears throat> every year in the Buckley household that that is played on Christmas Day, uh, and um, so it, when I I've always wanted to do action type roles, and uh, yeah, this I mean this is like for any any guy. This is you know you, you get to show up and play guns and fly around a Blackhawks and. Mm look really fucking cool and, and you know Sonny being just this kind of wise ass character it's Texan and uh, it, it's just it's, it's such a fun it's such a fun character and such a group, good group of guys and I've really become really all of us have like David and I um, knew each other for uh, years and years ago we had a, a mutual uh, friend this Irish guy that I knew uh, and uh, Max and Neil um, I met during the show I, on the pilot and stuff, but we've all become really good friends. Actually, Max has really helped helped me at the you know at the beginning with with Sonny and uh, and just some. He's, he's Max is a true country boy, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and one of the best guys you'll ever meet. And um, he he uh, he's really helped me with like country music. I I, I always liked country music, but I wasn't like into it per se. Um, and then I got into it and I was like, fuck, country music is truthfully like a lot like Irish music. Like there's a story mm -hmm. in it or a ballad or some sort. So I was like, oh, this is fucking great. So now I'm like, now I'm like, stagecoach, let's go. <laughs> like, you <know? laughs> You're all in at this point. Well, yeah. I'm all in, but yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? Uh, Bert gave me. Uh, Bert Coates. Of, uh, yeah, Bert. Uh, by the way, I laughed my nuts off the last time, the last episode you guys did with him on. <laughs> he was talking about <laughs> the, fucking, the gorilla fucking proctology shit <laughs> was, uh, oh man he is such a best. piece of shit he's, that guy he's, <laughs> i'd love he's to see him do a guest star on your show um just simply oh, because yeah. we call him bert from tv because he had his own tv yeah. show for a while on here just uh, so, yeah. if he could get back on one more episode so we could just play the shit oh, out he's of it over be, right? and over again it would be oh great. yeah yeah we, as soon we as got, we got to get like they had to shut yeah. down production. Obviously, they were you. You guys were getting ready to shoot twenty three, right? The last episode of three. Yeah, we were. We were yeah, we were on our, our very last episode, and uh, it, it got shut down. Yeah, yeah. but he was. Uh, Bert's going to be a stunt guy. Great. I just I just need one FaceTime of Bert enough that it, his full face is on oh, camera. Oh, I've, I've already got, just put it on loop yeah, on Instagram. If AJ, if you're not in the scene that he's in, I need you to fucking film it and send it to me. So oh, can, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. if he fucks it up oh, and I falls down or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's him, him and Tyler, man. Those guys, I fucking love those guys. They're so yeah. they're so fucking. Yeah. And the banter the two of them had going back, I was like, uh, like. They'd show up on set, and I remember Bert on chat. He's like, "Hey, do you know where that cocksucker is?" I'm like, "Who?" He's like, "Tyler Gray." He's like, "Tell that dick bag to go fuck himself." People, people get taken like, aback sometimes the way we talk to each other. Yeah, because yeah, Bert, yeah, Bert so, will come on yeah. everybody's Instagram post, no matter if you're out with your family or whatever. It'd be like, "Oh man, your wife yeah. looks lovely." Can't believe she's with a piece yeah. of shit like you. <laughs> and, and, it's just, <laughs> and it's just hanging yeah. there on your Instagram. And you're like, yeah. isn't that your it, friend? And it's like, yeah, man, you kind of have to know yeah. him. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he actually, the, my, my, my boots that I wear on the show, he sent me his own uh, uh, a Bison Union cowboy Oh, this is a sore his, subject, uh, actually, because he said. I'm, a, this, I'm, I'm real sore about this. Like he said that he was going to oh, send really? Ross some. What a year size ago. are you? Nine and a half. Okay. Yeah, now no, I'm not so mad. I'm, I'm a 12. I've asked for these boots. <laughs> First of all, we love Bison Union more than life. I yeah, love all yeah. their shit. The, the boots you in particular. No, I wouldn't fit in this. I wouldn't yeah, fit. Yeah. But the boots in particular, I've asked Bert for two years. They're always sold out. Uh, always yeah. sold out. And I was like, dude, you have the capability just to set aside a pair. Yeah. I will pay you American dollars yeah. cash for these goddamn <laughs> boots. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah dude, I'll, I'll send them to you. So this has been a two-year thing of, like, I'll send them to you. They're on the way. I've even gotten, like, a fake tracking number from him one time, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no boots. No boots from Bison Union. Yeah. No, these were his actual uh, 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 his actual boots. He was like, hey, uh, I'm going to send you these. And they have his his, uh, his old team logo on, them, on the back. But Because oh, he is the same size. Because they've got his, his he he him and I have the exact uh, same size feet. We got little feet, man. Oh, you're talking about combat boots. boots? Yeah, combat boots. Yeah. No, no, no. His Bison Union fucking 
cowboy boots. Like the leather oh. boots with the yeah. bison it's and the American flag. American flag. American flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rent, yeah, square toed yeah. fucking. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, those are, they're yeah. nice. They're really nice. Aren't they? The they're they're yeah. actually. I tried to buy them. They're actually. <laughs> two years. <laughs> Promo code Drinking Bros for twenty percent off at Bison Union. By the way, <laughs> dial up Bert, make him pay that twenty yeah, percent. I haven't gotten those boots. If you go to uh, Bison Union and buy something, make sure you put in the notes section that Bert can go fuck himself because he hasn't sent those boots. Over yeah, there. to Ross. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I'll I'll go on there too. I'll go on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to go through your career because it's it's lengthy, yeah. um, and you've done some really cool shit with a lot of cool. Just people. like my dick. With you, just like my fucking yeah. hog, dude. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to go into you did it, it says you did a uh, blue bloods um Selick yeah. mustache what are we talking in real life uh it, it's is is if uh you know when you watch um you know, watch that National Geographic show Earth mm -hmm. you yeah. know and it's like we actually used to get really show, high in Matt's basement and watch that yeah 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 Planet yeah, Earth Planet that Earth, sounds yeah. like a lot of fun so then this would make a lot of sense you know when they show like like those those fucking huge caterpillars that you're like, holy fuck, that yeah. is the weirdest looking thing. That's what that was like. I was like in the trail. I was like, I just, I, I went to the earth and I was like, it was a beautiful thing of, of something that God could only make. It was just, just sitting there perfect dead on his lip. I was like, that, it was just, it was, yeah, it was pretty impressive. Man. And it's just so, it's so full. It's so yeah. just, yeah, it's perfect. It's luscious. Perfect. It's yeah. luscious. Does yeah, he, he doesn't look like he's 70 years old either. No, dude. No, he's that that guy's got a piece on him for sure too. He's just he's just hog. ready. He's got a piece oh, like Kevin sure. like Kevin Costner style piece. Yeah, like uh, uh, I'm sure Mag Magnum piece eye is what that is. <laughs> Goddamn right it is. <laughs> <laughs> he's slanging an O he, show. If you look back at those old uh, those old Magnum shows, oh, he's wearing chubby shorts basically. Yeah, dude, it's like I'm oh, surprised yeah. the head wasn't peeking out at the bottom. <laughs> You know how many takes that probably ruined when they were like, "Hey Tom, hey your dicks yeah. out, bro. Your dicks out, bro. Just tuck the head back up." And he was like, "Oh shit, sorry, that's just me being awesome." You know? So true. Uh, let's go down to uh, Narcos. Uh, how was that? Yeah. Uh, that's look. Oh, dude. Everybody loves that, that, was, that show. That was it. Yeah, that was cool, man. Uh, I uh, got to go to Bogota, which was mm. insane, and. Uh, um, it was actually. Have you guys? Have you been to Bogota before? No, I'm not allowed. <laughs> Definitely not. No, allowed. Uh, no. Dan no, loves that. Dan loves the 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 whitest, freshest cocaine. Yeah, I do. And he probably mm -hmm. die there. Did you partake in any down there? I would never do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like all the Secret Service guys there wouldn't get prostitutes and then not pay them. Yeah, exactly. Come exactly. on, brother. No, it, it was it was crazy. I did see though the the when we were down there, I saw a room uh, seized full of cocaine, and it was it was so huge, man. I was like, oh my god, this was insane. Like it was probably fifty, sixty feet by like. I don't know, 80, 100 feet. Like it was just so, like just, a basketball um, court full of cocaine. Pretty basically. much, I was just like, you, you know, how many games of horse you could play in here? It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lot more interesting than this bullshit ESPN's putting on right yeah. now. I don't care about this horse nonsense. Do something more creative. Let's show Michael Jordan talking about cocaine. Yeah, uh, I love well, that they let off that. Yeah, they let off the last answer. That was like great. basically the entire eighty four, eighty five Bulls team was on cocaine, according to Michael Jordan. It was awesome. So, That's exactly. Have what you watched you that yet? It was. Uh, I haven't seen it. No. Oh, it's great. But Save I, it. I, Save I, it. I I uh I got a uh, I read this book of uh uh Hacksaw Jim Duggett. That's funny. Yeah. He's right Hacksaw here. Jim That's Duggett. his cousin. That's Dan's cousin. He's right here on the table. Do you see? No him? way. Yeah. Yeah. Is he really your cousin? He's married to my cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh he, he, he I met him in New Zealand. I was working over there in New Zealand, and there was like an appearance thing that he was at, and I would went and did the the appearance thing. I mm -hmm. did. I got to hang out. With, one of the nicest guys. Anyway, so I had I read his book, and then there was this other wrestler guy um, that was there, and he had told me a story. He was like, we would, uh, during Hulkamania, like in Madison Square Gardens, they would, like, before they'd go out, like Hulk, like all these all these wrestlers back in the day, they would just do a big old one, and then they'd walk out into Madison Square Garden just be like, yeah! Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just like, can you imagine dude. spending a weekend with like the Macho Man oh, back dude. in the back in the late eighties? Can you imagine yeah. that shit? Like your fucking yeah. face oh. would be numb. 
the I, entire weekend. I, I, <laughs> I spent a day with Roddy Roddy Piper. Oh, um, shit. And no he just had, and it ended up being his last interview. He died maybe like two weeks later, right? Um, but I spent the day with him because he was, he was interested in writing his book and his life story, and he was talking to me about that. And uh, we did the signings and a few interviews together and all that stuff. He gets into the car, and uh, it's exactly what you hope for. Like, he gets into the, the back of this yeah. SUV, leather jacket on, you know. Still, yeah. still looks great in shape, but kind of older. Yeah. You know, looks like a stunt guy. And he goes, uh, yeah. he goes uh, hey, man, uh, l- look away for a second. I got I to gotta do something. And I was like, what's that? He pops open the top of pills, just dumps like maybe three or four of them in his mouth. Obviously, Percocets <laughs> well, or some form of painkiller. And yeah, I was like, something. I go, brother, yeah. I don't have to look away for that. Yeah, uh, just, you can go ahead and dump yeah, out a couple yeah. in my hand, and I'll join you on that truck train. <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, well, he goes, oh man, I just had shoulder surgery." And I was like, "We all have, you know what I'm saying?" But yeah, uh, yeah. those guys went harder ever... than anybody. Him and Terry Funk. Oh, dude. those two guys. All, all those WWF guys from Rick the Flair? '80s in particular. Yeah. Rick Flair. Yeah. Rick Flair. Dude. You see the Rick Flair do- documentary. I don't know how he's yes. still alive. Rick... Honestly. Yep. Fuck. Oh my god. The... Whoa. Like yeah. that Whoa. guy. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, where did that come from? Woo! <laughs> that was cocaine, as well. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> but that was just that was just a like, I mean, going into Kmart as a kid and and buying uh, the Hulkamania stretch doll and mm-hmm. like take remember he like make, make sure you take your vitamins. Mm-hmm. You had to eat your vitamins, your Hulkamania things, and getting the the Hulkster vitamins like. That was like that was our childhood, man. But yeah. no, little did you know what was really happening inside. The I game. know, right? <laughs> oh my god! Well, all all but, art is fueled by drugs and fucking and sadness. It is, yeah. yeah. Essentially, so just like relax, yeah, everybody. for sure, yeah. man. Um, all right, let's it's go to uh, let's go to murder in the first. Uh, you yeah. were on that for about twelve episodes. How was that? That was cool. I, I came on for a, a year. It was uh, um, it was cool, man. It was the first time I got to play a cop. Uh, in a series, and uh, it was with Tate Diggs on TNT, mm-hmm. and it was the guy that created uh, uh, NYPD Blue, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just, uh, yeah, it was a really cool. It was, it was kind of like the first, that was at the start of the first sort of roles that I wanted to get in play. I kind of like when I when I when I finished uh, uh, CSI New York, and uh, I was I was playing these sort of nerdy characters. I played this lab guy. And then I, 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 I was on this other show, Supernatural, and I was, I was another nerdy guy. I was like a ghost hunter, face, like ghost facer, nerd, whatever. So I was playing a lot of nerds, <laughs> and uh, which is fine. I'm a, I'm a big dork at heart. And uh, and then during that time, my dad had passed away, and I fucking was boozing and, and just kind of lost my way a little bit. And, and I got really out of shape, and uh, my wife's pregnant. Anyways, I, long story short, I, I get uh, – called in for this really big franchise picture and um i find out i'm up for it and it's life-changing sort of stuff and um when i get the feedback they're like look he's our guy but we don't have enough time to get him into the shape that we need so unfortunately he's not going to get the part and that fucking wow rotted me inside so bad <clears throat> because i knew with my kid my first kid coming um but i i, I honestly i it had to happen because I was in such a fucking funk. Mm-hmm. Me and my dad were best friends and blah, blah, blah. But I was kind of just, I lost my way. So anyways, it kind of snapped me out of it and the society through that I was going to get in the best shape of my life. And as that sort of started to happen, cobwebs of all the shit I was doing was clearing. Uh, I, I I did. And then all these roles sort of started to, to, to find. I started ending up in, 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 the, in the right place at the right time, you know, in, in the right frame of mind and in, mm. in the best shape of mind. like roles that kind That's of awesome. fit your uh your personality more i guess right i mean you are yeah you can you can be a dork but you're a fucking outdoorsy guy like you like to yeah do that kind of shit yeah. be active and whatnot so yeah i mean you're not gonna yeah. get a role uh-huh. playing a fucking a seal if you're a fat piece of shit no it doesn't no. work that it's way. it's it, it it doesn't it doesn't work and uh but it's it's been uh it's it's and then you know i think when getting this you know, with the SEAL team, then just having that workout regimen. I mean, holy shit, man! That you think you're fit, and then you go and try to do some of the that stuff, and you're like, yeah. oh god, I'm a fuck, I'm such a pussy. Well, I mean, the, <laughs> the idea <laughs> the idea is that you're trained to be able to do the movement and then fight at 100 percent after the movement. So you get dropped in somewhere, you walk three to five clicks like kilometers in, and then you have to fight. Yeah. Like you walk in with yeah. all your gear, with 100 pounds of gear, then you have to fucking take it off and fight. So it's. People don't yeah, think man. about it that way. Like, yeah, I can fucking do these fight scenes. Like, well, why don't you walk 10 miles yeah. first? 
and then do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, that, sh- that show that Tyler and Bert did. The selection, the yeah. The selection. Yeah. Before, this is no joke, before I, I got the show, I had no idea that Tyler was going to the show. Mm-hmm. And my, uh, and I watched. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is uh, uh, th- that's some like uh, crazy shit that these civilians had to do. And I remember when my wife uh, met Tyler, or I found out the show. I was like, I called my wife when we were in New Orleans. I was like, Mike, I'm like, babe, that guy on the show, Tyler, but he's on the show. Mm-hmm. And she's like, No way. And I Facetime my wife, totally fangirled over Tyler. Mm-hmm. I was like, Easy, pal. Yeah, <laughs> easy. <laughs> but that the shit, the shit that they put that those guys through. And even when Bert was interrogating them, I was like, I, I was always was a little scared of Bert too when during those interrogation mm-hmm. scenes. But that was that was a fucking great show that they did. But that really gave I think people a, a, a glimpse of half of the shit that they uh, yeah. that they had. They must they must have just taken the piss out of those guys. They must have just loved. Oh that yeah, shit. I'm sure. Yeah, but I mean that's why that's Ooh. one of the reasons a show like yours is so important. Like, just from my perspective we don't share these stories for your benefit for any of your guys benefit. We share the stories yeah. for us. Like it's too, I feel like, especially after 20 years of war, it's just too much for a normal human being to, to bear the weight is too much. Yeah. And yeah, it's almost like an attaboy. Like, and it, like when you put your story out there and people are like, Holy shit, that's what you did. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost like it, it lifts a little bit of that burden off of your shoulders. It's no different yeah. than being in a fucking, in a clubhouse in the, in the, like in professional sports. And somebody's like, Hey, you've really been doing it lately. We appreciate like feeling, yeah. feeling appreciated like that helps ease the burden a little bit. I don't think a lot of people are able to articulate that or they don't understand the, the principle of it, but that's what makes it the accuracy of the show so important. Like to actually capture the story. Like if you're, there's a lot of the stories that are on seal team, probably other shows as well are actual real life stories that have been adjusted and changed a little bit for, yeah. for the show. And mm-hmm. like when you're talking about Swanee, that whole storyline, that mm-hmm. that dude's dad and the guy who wrote it, obviously, uh, that was probably very cathartic for them. And that's yeah. on a smaller scale, but on a grander scale, everything you guys do, it, it, it gives us a sense of pride and dignity, which is, is essentially a prophylaxis for depression. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. helps. It's, yeah. it's, it keeps you out of that dark headspace. So it's. It's it's an interesting dynamic for somebody who's been in war to thank somebody for who's never been in war to, for portraying it accurately, but it is what it is, right? I mean, it's I think it's super yeah. I think it's super important for our community, so we really appreciate what you guys do there. I appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you. I've said that to Neil as well. It's like guys that have previously had no no interaction with the military whatsoever, all of a sudden are yeah. like you guys know more about what really happens in combat than a lot of people that have actually served in the military at this point, just from being exposed yeah. to that so long. So I feel like you have a deep appreciation yeah. for it. Well, I think, I think too, cause I think a lot, like just going off, we said there, you know, when we first started, I didn't know what to ask. Like I didn't want to pry. I didn't mm-hmm. know how to, you know, approach certain things, come character wise or building, you know? So, and I, I think what was great is that, it just kind of naturally, you know, all of a sudden we'd be talking about something and, you know, with Tyler or with Goldie or with whoever else, and just whoever else is on the show, my, my, my stunt double chase and just randomly a story comes up and it's these, but it's just, there's such a bigger metaphor to it of mm-hmm. how we're applying it to what we're doing. And like I said, I think some of the times it comes out and where it's, you know, it, 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 it you know, sometimes I've heard, you know, like guys is like, dude, I haven't thought about that. Or, or we would be on our set of t- this, I think happened to Tyler. It's happened to Tyler a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And we've been on the, on the, our fake, um, C-130 on, mm-hmm. on the stage. And Tyler all of a sudden goes, Whoa, he's like, Whoa, I just had this. And he goes into this flashback of like, wherever we're standing, he's like, this great right here on the floor. Fuck. He was like, fuck it. Reminded me of blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And it was like, then he goes into a story and it was cool just to hear, those things then you like you know footnoting like okay that's that's a great thing to hear and for you know a guy that like you said has never i've never portrayed anybody in the military i think it was like i got i got thrown in the fire i had no idea sort of what i was doing but these guys really sort of put their arms around me and have really made sure that i was the best that i could be to portray them Mm -hmm. you know 
uh, on the day, which has been a great experience. Yeah, I mean, you've got, I think, not to not to trash anybody else, but for many of the main characters, I feel like you embody a seal as much, as much if not more, than anybody else that's on that fucking Bravo team. Oh, I appreciate right? that, man. Just because, like, <laughs> there's a level of, like, uh, of... I think it's cognitive dissonance, uh, to be honest, but there's mm. a level of arrogance within the SEAL community that is necessary to do mm. the type of work they do. But it it mm. it manifests itself in very, like, caricature-like ways sometimes, and you've done uh-huh. a good job of capturing that. I mean, you haven't written a book yet on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure that's coming that's soon. That's coming, though. Yeah. What it's yeah. like to play <laughs> a fake SEAL <laughs> as a Navy yeah. SEAL, yeah. I think you actually had yeah. that idea, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Like, you wanted to – somebody. he wanted somebody to write a basically like an autobiography about how what it's like to pl- be a fake SEAL, like play a SEAL on TV. <laughs> yeah. Like, talk about, like, yeah, the PTSD dude, you got. Dude, that's funny as fuck. You can, that is so fucking You can funny. tell that story awesome. about getting uh, getting a concussion from not opening your mouth and shit. Like, yeah. it's really... <laughs> talk about like, how traumatic it was hearing somebody else's story and shit like that. That would be really yeah. fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, Dan Briggs used to call me... Uh, you know Dan? You guys know mm-hmm. Dan Briggs? Mm-hmm. He was a Delta, and, and yep. he was with us season one, and man, he would call me Soup Sandwich because... I like, you know, just, <laughs> he's like, he's like, you're a fucking soup sandwich. You would just yell at me because I was like, just learning. He could tell there was so much shit going on. I was like, fuck. You know, I wanted to get it right and I forget something. I'm like, fuck. He's like, and then they nicknamed me soup on the show. They're like, soup, where are you fucking soup? Soup, get your fucking ass up here. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, on these on these TV shows, you have so much dialogue, and oftentimes yeah. it's being changed right up until you know the, the very yeah. last second. Yeah. And then I'm yeah. sure, as an yeah. actor, you've you've got to remember all the technical things so that you don't fuck yeah. it up for the military audience. And yeah. you're like, yeah. all right, yeah. well, shit, that's that's too much, man. That's too much at once. Yeah, yeah. It, it, see, it, see, I mean, honestly, I would say like people are like, oh, did you guys do a boot camp stuff? Like we did, you know, think, but I, I, dude, it still feels like a boot camp because there's still so much shit. That I still am learning, or that I've got to tighten up, or you know, I, for the and the dialogue thing. Like I suffer from really bad dyslexia. Like I, I cannot fit. Like for me to sit down and read a book or a script, it is next to impossible for me. I have to hear everything. So if and so when I'm memorizing something, I'll I'll memorize as much as I can by reading it. But I have to hear it on its feet first to for it to kind of make sense in my brain. It's a fucking it's a disaster up here. It's just like. Uh, like me going through high school or anything, they just wanted to push me through. They just like, yeah, keep going, kid. But whatever it is, you <laughs> fail or not, just you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I was on the short bus for a very long time. <laughs> 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 I think I still am. Uh, but uh, uh, but yeah, so there, there's that part of it too. But yeah, that 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 the learning curve, you know, it, it, it it's still it's still happening. But yeah, as far as like figuring out the character and figuring out. Uh, uh, all the different things and, and, and that uh, the, hanging out with Tyler, hanging out with Goldie and, and a bunch of other guys and kind of, you know, kind of understanding that it's been, and that's just been honestly getting together and having beers and shooting mm-hmm. the shit and being fucking idiots. And then, you know, and then just that's how I, and that, and I think too, what they've really said is just, it's the friendship. It's that brotherhood where the characters are really going to, you know, live and breathe is when the, you know, when you guys are honest with each other and just have this, 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 you know, this, this, the, a deep, uh, you know, connection that you is unexplainable. And as much as you can say that we're doing a TV show, like you, when you start to pull back the characters, and as much as I can understand it from a civilian, mm-hmm. it's, I think that's where the characters on the show really start. Yeah. To I thrive. mean, there's a reason that there are dozens of uh, former special operators and, and military people, and uh, like Dakota Meyer, mm-hmm. our, our buddy who's a Medal of Honor recipient, who do motivational speaking or teach classes on, on mm-hmm. like, people that have never actually been in the business world are teaching, like, how to communicate in small units, right? Because that's what we're yep. really good at. So uh, it's interesting uh, to see that mapped onto a, to, to a, something that actually develops over time, like a TV show where you're essentially playing – an operator with a group of the same guys for a long period of time, obviously that bond is going to grow very strong because you're using the principles that like you're talking about honest, like brutal honesty sometimes. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like it's the same principles that we use to make sure, look, I might hate everything about you to your core, but you and I got to go fight. You know what I mean? That's just the way it fucking is. It doesn't matter if we like each other or not. We got to go fight. 
Yeah, and it's and it's and I, I remember I've heard some stories like that too. There was guys that just like I couldn't stand this fucking one guy, but the second that we were in it, like I would do anything for. Oh, him. I've got like, I've got a fuck. very specific friend like that. One that tried to ride in my car with a bunch of fucking Uzis in his backpack onto Fort Bragg one time. And I'm like, no, dude, you got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but if war broke out right now, he's one of the first dudes I would call. Absolutely. Like he's, he's yeah. a fucking warrior. The problem with that is that warriors can't just walk around sometimes. Like, can you imagine, Yeah. imagine like Roman gladiators just walking the streets of Rome on a day-to-day basis. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would not work out well. And there's a, those, like, those I, what's that? Those guys got, those guys got serious ass. Oh yeah, oh, they just kind of like hung out, oh. got and drunk, women. and fucked all day. Yeah, yeah men oh. and women. <laughs> That's pretty matter. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh, holes a fucked. hole. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, get fingered, you get fucked. You're, you're, you're getting fucked. Yeah. Either way, um, l- let me ask you the difference between like uh, tech advisors on something like your show now and like Hawaii Five O. So I, I see that you were on Hawaii Five O. Do they even care yeah. how you hold a gun on there? Is it kind of like, hey man, you get a first class trip to Hawaii? You get to take, you know, your wife, and yeah. it's a it's a vacation type of set. Well, P- P- Peter Lankoff, who's the showrunner, that was my, uh, was my boss over at, at CSI New York. He was the showrunner on that, and then he left to go do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it's it's again until I did SEAL Team, I thought that that was you know you met the tech advisor, and he's doing his thing, and blah 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 blah. And I thought that you know I got what I needed to get in what the, the time that you're allowed allowed mm-hmm. to give, right? Until I've done SEAL Team, it's like a whole nother, it is like just everything. And even just this, the fear of God that you see that, like how I was on the first episode when a guest star comes in and they, and they have no military background and they're, you're basically thrown to the wolves. You're mm-hmm. like, you need to figure this out real quick. Yeah. And like Scotty or Tyler or Chase or someone will spend like, or they'll bring like a day before, or an actor will, you know, like we've all said like, oh yeah, I've, 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 I've shot guns before. And they're like, okay, you have, and they're like, they're like, yeah, and then they fucking show up to set, and they're like, where's the trigger? And you're like, oh, you're like, oh fuck, yeah, you know? and that's happened a bunch of times. Uh, but I think, it, yeah, I think you know, until the doing SEAL Team, I thought I was getting all the right information on any show that I've ever done. But they are a hundred percent. I'd say ninety five percent of them are are wrong, mm-hmm. or yeah. just not thorough. Yeah, you know, or just don't care, or how, just don't care. How about Justified? Because that that was one of my faves. Um, how were they on that set? Uh, awesome. That was, I mean, the reason I got SEAL Team is because the character, you know, I played Danny Crow mm-hmm. on, on that. I think it was a season four. Is that like, like Dewey, Dewey's bro. brother? No, do I was Dewey's cousin. Cousin, I yeah. was, uh, I was the, it was me, Michael Rappaport, mm-hmm. and with the young guy. I, 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 Rappaport's I, been on this show had, before. Yeah. Oh, he's, fu- how funny He's that funny as shit. It's crazy. He's gotten a little political lately, but uh... oh, I know. Yeah, he, yeah, dude. He's he, a, a little. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, yeah. Fun Dick, guy in Dick. real life. He's a funny guy in real life. Yeah. I, I we yeah, enjoy him, but Jesus Christ, man, yeah. he's he's gone off the deep. He's end. gone down the hole. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, 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 for, to say the least. Uh, but he, he was uh, he he was a, a really fun guy to to, to work with, and, and that uh, playing uh, Danny Crow and the twenty one. Hey, does that does that twenty one foot rule really work? Yes, you're talking about so twenty one twenty one foot rule to the audience. For the audience is if yeah. you're if you're an armed person, you have a gun on you and a holster on your hip, and someone's twenty one feet away from you. It takes the average person the same amount of time to get to you with a with a uh, a, a melee knife. weapon, a knife, or a fucking baseball bat or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It takes the same amount of time for them to get to you as it does for you to pull your weapon and fire. Now that's for an average person. For me, I would kill you before you got a fucking yeah. step on. But a normal person, yeah. yeah, like a look, cops are not, they just don't have the budgets to train people the way they need to be trained, to be honest. Yeah. Except for the yeah. special units. Yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely, yeah, 21 foot rule is absolutely true. So I was, I was always curious in that show when they were like, I'm like, well, how? Because I know I'm going to have the, the, the face off at the end, you know, with Raylan. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they said, they're like, the, I think it was Ben who en- ended up hiring me for SEAL mm-hmm. Team, was one of the head writers on it. He's like, when I showed up on set in the morning, he's like, dude, wait till you, he goes, I knew my death. I, I knew I was going to die in one of the upcoming episodes. And I was so bummed because I love that character so much. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's going to be fucking great. And I literally, I'm bare, I'm dig, I dig, I dug a grave for my dog. Sir, sir, not sir, so that's on this show, but I dug uh, a grave for my dog. And, uh, and then Raylan's there and pulls out the gun and I, it looks like I have the jump on him. And then I fucking fall in the grave and, 
stabbed myself in the face. But it was a great, it was a, it was a great <laughs> best, best, best death scene of all time. But I got, I ended up getting Seal Team because they, of Ben uh, Cabal, because he was the head writer. And when this no Seal shit. Team came up, he was, the, he was the writer of that. He had called me. He's like, hey, I, um, I'm doing this pilot and I wrote Sonny um, thinking of you and I'm going to bring you in for it. And I was like, fuck, awesome. So that that's was, rad. Um, yeah. I, sh- I didn't know you did 141 episodes of CSI New York, man. I they cranked yeah. those out, man. Yeah. I apologize, man. I because I was like, man, you you made it now with a regular role. God damn it, dude. Um, the 141 episodes is mega. It yeah. was one of those shows. I'll, I'll be totally blunt with you. Like yeah. all the CSIs, yeah. there was like a million of them. Yeah. I remember this one. Was, yeah. This one was Gary Sinise, right? That was Gary. Yeah. Who who is to this day one of my really good buddies and. He's done more for the cool. veteran community than probably anybody yeah. else in Hollywood yeah. that's ever existed. Yes. Honestly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I've never seen anybody raise the amount of money for vets that that guy can. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. it is about. Yeah, he has, and and he's really taught me. And in, in, with this, you know, when I got this, I called him right away and I was like, "Hey, you know, how do what do I do? Like, how do I use my platform?" And and he said, "AJ," he was like, "It's not about doing an Instagram posts; it's about showing up." He goes, "You just mm-hmm. need to show the fuck up." Mm-hmm. He goes, that's all it is. He goes, just show up, be there for the guys. And if you say you're going to do something, you do it. And, um, and, and, um, and he goes, and then he was also too, he's like, look, it just, there's, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of shitty foundations out there that had good intentions, mm-hmm. but unfortunately they, 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 they're not the best when the, all the money doesn't go there. And I was like, really? So then I've kind of helped used him, the sounding board, of for different foundations that I've gotten involved in. I'm like, what do you think? And, you know, or, or you know, talk to various different, like, you know, uh, vets and whatnot. And I'm like, what do you think of this? And, you know, so, but he's been, he's just been such a inspiration for, for me with, uh, with this. And, and when I got the crazy po- the story with, with CSI, when I was, uh, I was 26, 27 years old and I've gone through really, it was kind of what, what I was talking about before. And I, uh, I, had, I was living out of my car. I'd been in my car for a year, year and a half, like physically living in my car. And I, you know, I bounced around. I was bouncing around on couches and here and that. But um, I had a suitcase in the back of the car and hadn't been laden forever. It really sucked. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, uh, I, uh, when I got that call that I booked CSI New York, I had. Uh, thirty-two dollars and ninety-five cents to my name because I and I remember this clearly because it was outside of Seven Eleven on Curson and Sunset, and I was going to go in and get. I was trying to figure out if I, I'll get some like microwavable mac and cheese and like a Slurpee, <laughs> and that'll cost me like four bucks. And then I'll go like fill up my car, and then, and then I got the call that I booked. You know, it was a seven-year contract. And I was just like, you know, my life changed. Seven and, and not six. Was, yeah, that, it's usually six. Yeah. It was seven years for for CSI, ba- huh? Ba- ba- yeah, b- yeah, back then, yeah, because it was it was. Uh, the, I mean, those shows are tent poles, um, so they're going to be on forever. I guess yeah, probably, yeah. Th- probably this, different. This was they they, uh, they literally were, they literally because CSI was in its first season, and it was it was the third spinoff. Uh, of the, you know, it was my, CSI my embassy of Vegas. And then this mm. was, uh, this, and I was, I was towards the end of the first season, uh, that I came on and, uh, yeah, just forever, forever changed my life. And yeah. That was, was an, a, that yeah. was, I'm looking at it now. It was an 05, um, CSI. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they, it, yeah. it used to be eight. <laughs> Fuck. They, they used to be eight year deals yeah. and they've slowly shortened yeah. it over time. I mean, people yeah. have tried to get fired off of them and all that other stuff. That's a gig though, yeah. that you stay with as long as you possibly oh. can. People don't oh, understand yeah. actor wise. They don't understand that it's like gigs like this don't come around very often. Yeah. Stay as oh, yeah. long as you can possibly fucking oh, stay. Yeah. Make all the oh, money yeah. you can, and yeah. and worry yeah. about the other stuff later. Uh, you look at yeah. Boreanaz is a perfect example. Yeah. He's that, done that, that repeatedly. Yeah. He's been on TV career, yeah. for thirty years <laughs> yeah. as a series yeah. regular. He's, yeah, he's the he's the only person in television history to do. I think it's he did five shows back to back episodes. that have been. Yeah, they've been syndicated. Yeah. So hopefully, well, now it's you know, eighty-eight, though, really, right? It's eighty, yeah, eighty-eight, something. I think so. Yeah. It's between eighty and hundred. I mean, so I you think guys, the number. You're getting close. Yeah, you're getting pretty close. Sixty-two right now. Yeah. Have you guys yeah, been picked 62. up for a season four yet? 
Not yet. Um, we should be hearing when it's all the, this COVID thing. I think yeah. uh, it, we're, it's delayed. I, I think the season will start a little later. I think they're trying to figure out like how do you go back and how do we, you know, um, you know, deal with you know uh, what's going on. Which I don't know, it's fucking uh, right, don't get me started. What? Let's hear uh, it. Come on, yeah. don't hold back. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I, it's not. Look, I just think it's. H1N1 and and what what's going on with that? You know, we didn't freak out like this. Yeah, you know, and there yeah. was vaccines and people and people died. You know, and 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 yes, the COVID. There's 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 no vaccine and and, and whatnot. There's just so much. There's just a lot of shit that's not adding up. And the more the deeper we get into this, I'm just like it's you know we can't we're not we can't sh- keep the country shut down. We've got to figure out a way to you know the people that are healthy you know, and get them tested and, and get them back to work. And the people that are immune compromised and um, are elderly, like they would with H1N1 or whatever. Because my wife used to work in infectious disease at, at Cedar sinai And when during the flu or doing any of that, the, the, the elderly and, uh, and the people that are immune compromised are, are basically quarantined. Like they are, you mm-hmm. cannot, you know, during the height of flu season, you can't go in there. So there's just, I don't know, there's just so much stuff that's not adding well, up. Well, that's what they Sweden's just, doing, what, by the way. Which yeah. in the last two days, Bloomberg has written a story saying that it's working. Yep, and so has yep. uh, the Guardian, which is not a conservative. Paper. And, and I'm looking at here. Th- so three states have opened up. Uh, they're going to open up next yeah. Monday: Georgia, uh, South Carolina, and Tennessee will be open yeah. as of Monday. And they're they're kind of going under the same rules as Sweden are, where where it's if you're older, if you have respiratory issues. Yeah. Stay home. The rest yeah. of everybody get back to work. And then they're going to close. Yeah. They'll keep close nightclubs and bars, they said. But they'll yeah. reopen restaurants yeah. and everything else. Barbershops, tattoo yeah. parlors, you name it. Yeah. And I think, look, it, it, you know, it, it, like I think the Czech Republic was the first country that, you know, wore the masks. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they did not see any type of spike at all. They, they, it was by law implemented. So, look, if in a workplace, if you've got to wear a mask, is that it's not that you're – helping you know you, that you won't get the spread by wearing it but we need to help you stop it by if you potentially are you know symptomatic and you won't won't spread it it's just mm-hmm. different things that we have to adjust to but all this you know all this there's just so much fear that's been put out there and the thing you use you know use your brain and, and are responsible and what a surprise wash your fucking hands and be hygienic i mean that's yeah that, isn't that i mean <laughs> god isn't that crazy make sure you wash your hands after you take a piss or shit it's like thanks I'm, yeah. I'm glad, but in 2020 we're, we're figuring that out. <laughs> well we discovered uh the germ theory of medicines i think in 1901 yeah so it's take taken yeah. 119 yeah, years 119 years yeah, that's about right that's about right and and it was crazy like we got we got the hydroxychloroquine and it was you know, when I went to go get it, this is back in March. We talked to one of Abby's doctors. He's like, mm-hmm. "Hey, get this." This is months ago. He was like, "He was like, hey, this and zinc and uh, Z pack. This Z-Pak, seems to be yeah. Z-Pak, yeah. yeah." When the fact is, you know, and it, it literally cost when we went to the it was twenty bucks. Yeah, some people. So but, some people uh, got itchy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Some people who had uh, underlying conditions from hydrochloroquine had elevated heart levels and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. But uh, for the but they, vast but, but, majority like, of people, buddies, it seems to yeah. work. Did you, when you guys over went overseas, did you take that for malaria yeah. and stuff? Yeah, we took it for yeah. like uh, two weeks maybe, and I had the craziest yeah. goddamn dreams I've ever had in my life. A lot of Anne Frank dreams you had. A lot of Anne Frank dreams, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> mostly Anne Frank dreams, which is why I came back and wrote that diary. Yeah, 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 exactly, um, which was a bestseller, by the way. Yeah, I wrote it from her perspective. I just thought, like, honor the woman. Yeah, you know, yeah. She had a rough time, and I rewrote <laughs> some of the parts, obviously, to make it better for Hollywood. Yeah, there was a sex scene I thought was a little too graphic for a 14-year-old, but you that was the choice you made. Well, she was gay. Do, do, do people know that? <laughs> no. Yeah. And I'm not going to speculate on that. No, it's not speculation. Yeah. It's in the diary. <laughs> have you read Anne Frank? Have you read the book that we always talk about? It's been a long time. God I'm gonna be. I'm gonna it. be honest with you. I think I was in seventh or eighth grade. Was, uh, no, was I read tops. I should refresh on it though. I read it every couple. Every We're couple huge francophiles. Yeah. We're francophiles. Yeah. Uh, now's the point in the show we get to the I'm drink. Saying nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. I'm saying I wouldn't either. <laughs> you're, you're 20 episodes from syndication. I wouldn't say a fucking yeah, word. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. 
Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Um, I, you know, it, it's always I always have to go with my dad. Uh, my dad was absolute stud, uh, and uh, yeah, he's he's yeah. I, I would I would go to to Papa Joe. He's, he just had his uh, his birthday was on the thirteenth. He ordered seventy six. So he was a, he was the best man that I ever had the pleasure of spending time with. He was just a stud, hard working, barrel chested Irish man. That I will tell you this story. This is actually a quick story. If if, if we got time, real yeah, quick. Yeah, uh, we we had nothing. We have nowhere to be. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, but this is this is this is who my dad was, and, and I'll never forget. I I. I I was at school. I was probably twelve years old, and I figured like, you know, when you learn like when you you flip somebody up, you're like, oh, this means fuck you, and you're like, oh, cool, fuck you, and, like so you just start flipping everybody up, and people are like, oh my god, so you're like, yeah, everybody, fuck you, fuck you, and it was really exciting for me. It was anyways. So I'd come home, and I had a pretty strict Irish Catholic family, and uh, uh, my mom had said like, AJ, you're grounded if you don't clean your room, and was one of the dumbest things I ever did. Yeah, I was I just like, oh, fuck. I, was, I, I, I literally went, I literally went, I was like, fuck you. And my dad was at work, you know, but he appeared. And I just remember that he came into the kitchen and the look on his face, and he ran across the room and put me against the wall. It's the only time he ever laid hands on me. And he grabbed me and he was holding me tight against the wall. He said, apologize to my wife. I was like, what? And he's like, no man ever speaks to my wife like that. And I was like, oh shit, I'm fucked right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not his. This guy is gonna. I'm not his son anymore. Yeah, he's not yeah. seen like I. And he and I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. And he goes, apologize to my wife. I was like, okay. I was like, I'm sorry, mom. I'll never. Then he fucking clapped me, and that was it. But there was this, you know, it's the way that he was. You just did not fuck with his girl, ever. And he he didn't drink. He had a couple beers here and there towards the end with me, but uh, he was just a just a bricklayer, carpenter, fucking tailor, whatever. He had four or five jobs. Just just did whatever he did was for the family, so that we you know could have the better. He was just he was a stud. So and yeah. he moved you guys Cheers. from Ireland to Canada, so, then here, yeah. or did you move here? Yeah, uh, no, I I moved. So I was six when we left Dublin, Ireland, mm-hmm. and then uh, I went to Vancouver, Canada, and then when I was seventeen. Um, I got a, a role in disturbing behavior and I came down here for the press and I came here on my own and, uh, I turned 18 down here and, uh, and I have been in LA since I was 18. Man, <laughs> man. Uh, AJ, yeah, you're a fascinating yeah. guy and a hell of an actor. Uh, we enjoy, Thanks, guys, we please. enjoy you, uh, immensely mm-hmm. on uh, seal team and, uh, hopefully Thank this you. is over soon so you can get back to work, get back to business and, yeah. uh, and keep entertaining yeah. people week in and week out on CBS. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, for AJ Buckley, yeah. Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>